Hello everyone, um, it's Nick Neal here um, at uh, Helix uh, National site near Northampton. Um, I'm here today with uh, Michael Schimmel, um, agronomist here, and we're just having a, a look at um, the overwinter cover crops, uh, how they've performed, what they're doing in the soil, um, and a bit of look at the, the management of them prior to, to drilling. Um, so we've got some grazing going on, we'll have a look at that. Um, uh, and the majority have just been uh, hit by the, uh, the frost, the severe frost that we've had. Uh, I think we've been down to minus eight, minus nine. Um, I've got pretty good control um, of, of the covers without spraying thus far. Um, so uh, yeah, we're in boiler field uh, at the moment. It's one of our, uh, one of our focus fields on this, this site for um, quite a bit of trial work. Um, and immediately between uh, Michael and myself, uh, we've got our maxi router uh, on the, the headlands. Um, yeah, lots of brassica species, uh, particularly diacon and uh, fodder radish um, and uh, mustard to punch down into the soil uh, and loosen it up, remove moderate surface um, compaction. Um, you know, I think it's fair to say we've got serious compaction, we need to get some mechanicals uh, in there. Uh, but where we've got moderate turning headland surface um, consolidation in the soil, then this mix is really good um, for helping us sort that out. And we've done all the headlands on the farm here with our maxi router mix. Um, if I swing round a little bit, you can see right next to that, we've got um, a uh, crop of uh, stubble turnips which is currently being grazed off by sheep and we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, looking at that because it's really quite interesting. Whether you want to call this um, you know uh, just cover cropping or looking at agroecology um, processes in farming or you want to call it regen um, it's really interesting observing when you start to do different things that you've never done before and then you really start to observe what's going on um, it really is very interesting what we, we, we start to pick up, um, uh, particularly when it comes to what animals do and don't like to eat, as opposed to what we as humans decide they, they're going to eat. Um, so we'll have a look at that uh, in just a minute. Um, but the first thing we're going to do uh, is have a look at the impact of these cover crops on soil structure. So the first cover we're going to look at is our maxi router. So uh, this is a uh, eight-way mix of linseed, um, buckwheat, phacelia, uh, diacon radish, tillage radish, uh, mustard, um, and what else have we got in there, Michael? I'm just trying to think now. I'm always forgetting. Linseed. Um, and this is the impact that it's having on the soil um, at the at the moment. So. Hopefully you can see that that soil profile is really nicely aggregated. It's pretty dry, uh, given the amount of rainfall that we've had. Uh, and we've had probably three quarters of an inch of rain overnight as well, uh, last night. Um, the surface of the soil is covered in, in worm middens. Um, so we are in a, a, a no-till situation for a number of years now, using a John Deere 750A as our drill. Um, and hopefully you can see that there's a, you know, worm middens are absolutely everywhere. The surface is being cleared of straw and the worm middens are absolutely everywhere to be seen. All these little piles of straw where it's been gathered together, they are all anisic worms, which are providing us really deep drainage, and good root penetration, good water movement and, man and, and uh, management of water through the profile. Um, so down in the the soil dig you can see that well the spade went in really easily um, it's dug out this uh, this profile of soil um, Michael do you just want to pull some of those roots out there and just give them a shake show us how they're going down so all of the roots of these these radishes are really you know nice and straight they're not showing us that we've got any uh, particular compaction that we having to mechanically deal with. Like I say, we're using this mix on the headlands, the turning headlands in particular, 
where the track and driller just squishing the soil down a little bit. I wouldn't call it, you know, severe compaction, but the soil is just getting a little bit tighter through that process. Um, the upper zone of the, the soil um, is really very, very friable. This is the area, obviously, we're going to drill. Um, and it's a really nice friable finish for us to get that drill into and create a nice seabed. A little bit tacky this morning because like I said we had three quarters of an inch of rain overnight um, but certainly down in the profile, lower in the profile of the soil um, it's really really quite manageably dry um, and that's typical of what we've seen of cover crops this year particularly the multi-species uh, cover crop. So what we'll do now uh, Let's take a wander over to where we've we've got the stubble turnip so you can see a completely different canopy so the sheep have been through here and on an initial graze uh, taking the tops off I've been through this um, uh, maxi rooter mix over here and increasingly what we're doing with uh, the grazing these is we're looking for the sheep to maybe eat about 60% of the cover and leave and trample 40% uh, of the cover. We've got a John Deere 750A that's going to pass through this cover crop and drill into that nice friable soil absolutely no problem at all as it will through this um, this double turnip here but the the issue of course is we've invested in stubble turnips here to feed sheep um, they've eaten the tops off and it's very very noticeable um, now that we're certainly for myself I've, I've never really been involved in sheep and grazing of them but my observation, and I think when you get into agroecology and regen, a lot of it is about observing what's going on straight in front of your eyes. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> sheep keep telling us they don't really like the tubers of stubble turnips. They'll eat them. When we leave them there long enough, the only thing they've got left is stubble turnips. But as we're going to look at in a minute, that starts to have impacts in soil condition that we don't want to have. Um, so really really interesting which is which is why I would much sooner have some stubble turnips in a mix but I would mix them with six or seven other species uh, so they've got a much more diverse range of grazing for the sheep because I only really want them to surface graze and leave our soil in really nice condition and here again we can see the surface of the soil it's nice and open it's got good stru structural or aggregate um, structure on the top that's letting water infiltrate no problem at all lots and lots of worm middens again so the worms are still here and if we come over here and have a look at where we've dug um, then again we can look at the uh, the soil structure it's really not bad at all it's wetter than where we've had the multi-species cover but by no means is that um, excessively excessively wet so Michael just wants to whiz that open in for us. You can see straight away by the part of the problem with only having, and I mentioned this last autumn, the problem with only having one species of a cover growing, whether it's for forage or not, is they're only doing one thing in the soil. And these, these roots tend to grow as designed out of the surface for the sheep to graze. So we don't get much other than these little spindly straight roots down into the down into the soil although there's quite a decent amount of, of hair root hair within this uh, this soil area but what we'll do now is go and have a comparison between these these uh, uh, have a look at how it's being grazed um, and uh, uh, what the aftermath of that is so here we've got a comparison uh, between where we've got the stubble turnips on the left and where we've got the multi-species maxi rooter mix on the right hand side dug out and lay the, laid side by side for comparison and hopefully you can see that the main feature is that we've got quite blocky aggregate structure in the um, stubble turnip mix because we've only got stubble turnips growing in there they tend to create one type of aggregate aggregate around their rooting system and if we come across and have a look at the the maxi router um, aggregation you can see that it's much more mixed size of, of aggregate a lot more root hair throughout the the soil zone uh, good penetration deep penetration of the roots 
but we're just having a better throughout the profile impact with that, that routing system. Uh, another feature I showed you last autumn in a series of videos we made uh, in this field looking at the stubble turnips and the maxi rooted cover was we got a section of this field that had been lightly cultivated and we've done that most years just to have a look to see if there's a benefit from doing cultivation. Uh, we've got to do a count in, in here as yet, um, we're just about to do that but I visually I think you can see if I just pan across where we lightly cultivated the soil prior to sowing the stubble turnips and you can see the population of stubble turnips that we've got there. If I pan across to just where the stubble starts here, so this is where we're not moving the soil at all, direct drilled the stubble turnips in um, and I think you can see that the there's less established stubble turnips in this side and that's certainly what we've been seeing in the last couple of years. There may not be necessarily a yield benefit every year from putting a cultivation in but years where we're dealing with a degree of, of chopped straw um, and disc drills the little bit of soil movement and it is only small just allows us to get better establishment of the, the next crop that we're putting in. Having said that we've got fewer roots and they're bigger each one of them's bigger uh, in the stubble area. Now the other thing I pointed out in the autumn and I want to do just again now is where we've cultivated the soil is the creation of weeds that we then get throughout the, the stubble area. Um, it was in the autumn we were showing a lot of cranes bill. Some of those are still here but they, they seem to have succumbed a lot to the, uh, the frost. Um, but what we've got now in here is through the base is really quite a lot of speed wells um, within this these stubble turnips. If I come across to the unmoved soil um, there's still some here and the speed wells just dotted around in the bottom but the amount of weed throughout the the area of um, non-cultivation just direct drilling in the stubble turnips is markedly reduced um, and we see that again and again and again so you know there's fours and against um, with with cultivation um, yes we might need some to get better crop establishment and clearly that's important but if we've got a particular problem with the weed we need to take that into account we may make life uh, more difficult for ourselves uh, in that respect now as I've mentioned in another video um, we sow stubble turnips to feed sheep it's something that we've traditionally done um, a lot of effort's gone into breeding uh, stubble turnips to, to feed sheep. But as I said, I think an observation for me is when we're grazing these, these cover crops and given that we want sheep to go on quickly, eat about 60%, trample 40% um, and leave the soil surface in really nice friable conditions so that we can direct drill straight into it with minimal uh, hassle. Um, where we've let the sheep go through and a quick graze over the whole field they've taken the tops off these stubble turnips they've not touched the roots at all they're really the last thing on the list they want to eat it's not until we get, we say to them okay all you've got left is roots to eat that they start pulling them out pulling them out the ground and nibbling away at them but when we keep them on longer for doing that we can straight away see what starts to happen to the surface of the soil. We're now starting to get some, some light compaction going on in that surface. We're losing that nice friable tilt and it's really not an ideal uh, situation for us. So if I walk a little bit further over to where the sheep have been at it for longer come down and look at the surface we can see that we've now lost that nice friable open surface so soil surface is starting to go more compact um, and it really isn't ideal for us to, to direct drill into. I've taken two digs from these various areas so this is where the sheep 
have been allowed to graze quickly across the surface. They've taken the vast majority of the surface growth off, but they've really not touched the tubers. Um, and we focus in on this area here. This is the bit we're going to drill into. You can see lovely friable soil structure, lots of worm holes through it, roots through it. Um, good infiltration of water, generally a dry profile. Really quite nice, ideal for drilling into. After we've left the sheep on for a little bit longer to get all those roots off, uh, which is what you'll do if you've got stubble turnips in, you've invested in money in those, you're going to get them eaten. But we can see the surface of the soil here for two to three inches down is now much more consolidated. We've shut all those worm holes off, pressed those down. We've lost those actively grown roots. The plant's been dead for some time. Um, much more difficult for us to direct drill into now and get good crop establishment. So we're going to use sheep to graze these cover crops. That's absolutely fine. Um, uh, my argument will be we should put multi-species covers in with some stubble turnips in if we must, but I'm really not bothered whether they go in or not. They're the least favorite food as far as I can see. So give them all the other species, let them graze those out um, and, and leave your soil in fantastic condition to drill into, avoiding this, uh, this puddling that we get on the surface where we leave uh, the grazing sheep on for the, just that bit too long. <laughs> 